Our round 16 match of the day was the third meeting for the season between South Fremantle and Claremont. The previous two meetings were unhappy memories for the Bulldogs, having felt the full might of the Premiership favourites. However, the Bulldogs showed real spirit last week when they led Perth for three and a half quarters before slipping to a 10-point defeat. Confidence counts for a lot in footy, and South were looking to cause a major upset. Medhurst is lurking. South from out of weather the storm. Carter, Ross, that's Adam Carter. Hand pass comes astray. Frenetic pursuit of the footy. It appears for Guglielmane. He ran into Fong. Here's Davies now. Onto the left boot. Floats it in towards full forward. Now there's a free kick, a push, and it's going to go the way of Seabee. All clear. All clear. Now that was socket off the ground. I didn't see who socketed it. No, I didn't actually either. And this looks like... It's got the symptoms of a ball up. In fact, it was cleared by Murphy. Oh, ball comes out there. It is really willing at the moment. Here's a chance for Chad Jones once more. Floats the ball. Goal and Claremont have got another one. Ball clear. Puts Claremont back into attack. He wants Hamp. Hamp running with the fight of the football. Allows it to bounce. Goes inside the attacking 50. He'll head towards goal. CB. He just socketed it through. So... Intercepted there by, I think it was Borovac. Here's Schleuth. He Go. gives it off now to Kelly. Kelly straight down toward full forward. Clemont again destroying the footy. Banner collects the crumbs, kicks the ball across his body. And does he get the right bounce? I think he has. Davies fumbled initially, got the hand pass out to Williams. Hasn't he got some tear away speed? Takes a bounce, really backs himself, John Williams. He's had a superb term. Clever little kick, gives it to Bradshaw. Bradshaw, 25 metres out, runs into an open goal and puts it away. On in turn to Bear though. Hand pass was a McIntosh, couldn't take. It was a little bit behind him. That was clever from Bradshaw, one of the power broker's sons I was speaking about. Tapped it between his legs to Davies. Good take. So, yep, from Jones. Working it forward by hands. This is Bradshaw. Bradshaw can snap and Bradshaw goals. He's having some day. Verrier was under pressure when he got a hand pass behind him. Bradshaw just got the kick away. Now, that won't be a mark was touched, it came to Smith, now to Taylor, Taylor goes long, bang, it's through for a goal. All clear. There we are, moving it backwards, all White's kick was smothered, socket forward by Brown, it'll come now to Fong, Hamp involved too, Fong will snap on goal, that is some finish. All clear. They need to use the ball cleanly now, Adam Carter does well on this occasion, he finds Bearstow, and Bearstow down the outer side of the ground. Craig White loves situations like this. Often the relief, the relief dog. In fact, he got it. That was Craig White. Gives it off now to Guglielmana. Guglielmana to the half forward line. Cook's taken the mark. This is a good setup. Schleuth hand pass, not great. Miller under pressure. Gives the ball back to Grimer. Grimer accelerates, kicks, and he's jailed it. Andrew Brown. Kicks it into the pocket. Claremont with the numbers down there. Chad Jones at ground level. He's caught. But releases the hand pass to Medhurst. Dangerous in situations like that with a capital D. Paul Medhurst in characteristic fashion. We have not seen a lot of him this afternoon. They claim on in this term. Four behinds. A goal. Two out of bounds on the full. There's Magumba! Wowee! Just talked about how he likes to leap into the air and he does it again. The kick... Not great, but it works out okay for Banner. Puts it inside, attacking 50. This is Cook. Elects the hand pass. Got it on towards Carter. Carter snaps around the body. He's kicked it. Smith for Claremont. Found you. Tumbles a kick up to the half forward line. Here's a go now. Re leading in the race to the footy is Hamp. Paddles it for himself. Then he overruns it. Provides an opportunity in doing so, though, for Danaher. Hand pass to Brown. Brown lines them up from 40 metres. And the goal umpire doesn't move. Oh, we didn't mean another goal. We want to keep some life in this game, Lammy. Well, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right at the moment. Especially not those other games that are going on at the moment. Andrews. Taken, though, by Hams. Gets it off to Grimer. Grimer good in situations where he can use his pace. Gives it to Banner. Banner! He's got his third goal! Oh, that was all too easy by South from Adler in the end. Real desperate stuff at the Hand moment. Bearstow. His hand pass was intercepted by Davies. It comes to you. He'll put Claremont long inside attacking 50. And he finds his man. Jones elects the play on. Hands it off to Bradshaw. It has been his day. No doubt about that. He's now kicked six. 
and it was Jack Bradshaw's day. Six goals from the young star, Medhurst, Brown, Fong, Jones, Hamp and Seavey all contributed one, whilst for the Bulldogs, Banner, Magumba and Hams each kicked three, while singles came from Grimer, Miller, Carter and McIntosh. An outstanding game by Craig White across the half-back flank with 27 possessions. Mitch Banner also 27 possessions and three goals. Mitch Carter had 20 possessions. Ryan Cook, the skipper, 22 and six marks. Dylan Ross across the half-back line with 22 possessions and six marks. Hayden Schleuth, an excellent second quarter, 24 possessions. Toby Besto around 20. And McIntosh, 21 possessions from the half-back flank and he kicked a goal. For the Tigers, arguably best on ground, Andrew Brown, the skipper, had 37 possessions and kicked one goal. Bradshaw, six goals, four from 25 possessions. He took seven marks. Murphy, Murphy, typically busy with 31 possessions. Danaher, 27 possessions. Seabee, 22 possessions. What that doesn't show is he had a mammoth 59 hitouts. Davies, 19. Chad Jones, one goal, three from 14 possessions and 17 possessions to Tommy Taylor and the goal. And so the match stats, they look pretty even in the end. South Mantle using the ball a lot more by hand. The inside 50 certainly evened up after half time, but uh, Clement led that race by eight. The big thing was the hit outs, 83 to 23. That was a huge bonus as far as the Tigers were concerned. Centre breaks, though, pretty e- even as South Mantle did well to shark a lot of those centre breaks. So at the end of the day, it was that the Tigers, well, they led the basically all day by 10 points at quarter time. The margin was 34 points in favour of the Tigers at half time. It had evened out 66 apiece at three quarter time. And then in a riveting final quarter, the Tigers running out four point winners, 13 goals, 16.94 to South Fremantle's 4.690. Yes, thanks very much, Phil. I've got Jack Bradshaw with me. Jack, tell, about, tell us about that last couple of minutes. It was, it was a bit of a grind, you know. They had the ball in their Ford 50 for about three minutes. So we, the midfielders, to their credit, just locked it in and then we got a few quick kicks out and we uh, got the win in the end, so it was good. Yeah, it was locked in your, in that uh, back pocket of yours there for about five minutes and uh, Magumba was trying to get up over the top and uh, there was a fair bit of going on. You know, uh, you're pretty lucky there at one stage, I think, and there was a great tackle there by Winmo right at the end. Yeah, I thought every single time the ball came down to Magumba, I thought he was going to stand on someone's shoulders. So we got, we got lucky there, I think, a little bit. But, yeah, it was a good win. Yeah, you gave yourself, uh, you know, six goals out of probably 13 or 14. That, that's a big effort. You, you must be happy with the way you're playing. Yeah, I set myself for a big game today. I just wanted to um, hit the ground running and I started well. Third quarter, we, we sort of dropped off a bit, but then, uh, yeah, got back into it in the last quarter. So, yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, you've got some great players around you up there. Medhurst, do you train a bit with him? Does he give you yeah. a few tips? And Yeah, he's a bit of a mentor and uh, Richo's, Richo's down there. He's been he's played 100 games of Waffle and he's a good, he's a good mentor. So I'm um, just learning as much as I can off those older heads and, uh, yeah. It's going well. Now, it hasn't been easy for Claremont for the last sort of four or five weeks. You've had a couple of real close ones. Every team's trying to knock you off the perch. You know, you're doing a great effort at the moment. And the depth that you seem to have there at the moment, Brad, is it just seems, keeps coming through. Yeah. We've got lo- lots of young players in the resis the last few years. We've won a few premierships, so they've just come in and they've done a really good job. Fongy, um, Goids, all, all the boys are coming in and they're doing really well. So we're pretty happy with that. No, you're going along really well, mate. You must have had a good coach when you were a bit younger and stuff like that, bud. But you're doing really well, mate. Good stuff. Thanks, Rod. Cheers. Mark, I suppose it doesn't get much closer than that, the last 10 minutes here of the game. Oh, yeah, I thought that, uh, yeah, it was a long, long 10 minutes. To be fair, we were pretty disappointing today. I don't think that um, the result's one thing, but our effort, I thought, was pretty pretty ordinary. So, look, we take the win. I thought South were unlucky a, a couple of times. They were in 50 and they could have kicked goals. So they've definitely improved, but I think um, our form has to be better. You got obviously to a you know a good lead coming into half time and everything like that, and I suppose you know the the goalless third quarter probably you know asked some questions. Yeah, look, I think our third quarter starts have been pretty poor. We've given away goals, I guess, in the first minute, a like few weeks in a row. Um, yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of things. A good start helps you, but 
we can't just gloss over poor quarters like that. If you get six goals kicked against you, uh, we need some momentum in the next few weeks because I guess we've um, we've fell over the line a few too many times. Now, from a uh, opposition coach's point of view, um, Paul Mugamba, he must be a very hard player to match up on and tactically wise, hard for you to sort of find a, a match up. Oh, yeah, look at probably a couple of those high balls. I don't think we defended too well. When you take a chest mark inside 50 of the high ball, that's that's not great. But, yeah, you take a, you cop the ones where he jumps over the packs, you cop those, but when he takes a uncontested chest, chest mark in 50, you don't cop those. And the good thing is, uh, Webby, again, a lot of young kids showing some good form. Um, you know, Bradshaw, good. Windmars tackle right at the death there, fantastic. Just the youth just keeps coming through for you as well. Yeah, yeah, look, we've, we're probably at a necessity at the play a lot of young players, but I guess uh, the reality is we've got to make sure that our performances are still tracking up and, and look, you just don't gloss over some things, so we've got to work a, a bit harder, be making sure our form's better. Got to remember also, Webby, that good sides win the close games, mate. Well done. Yeah, thanks. So the Tigers held on by four points. West Perth held on against a fast-finishing Peel Thunder to run out 16-point winners at Bendigo Bank Stadium. Swan Districts massacred Perth at Steel Blow Oval, running out winners there by 89 points. And East Fremantle did it easily. They savaged the Lions by 66 points at Medibank Stadium. So to the latter, Claremont retain top spot. West Perth retain Second spot, Nice Perth, despite having the buy, sit on third. Swan Districts have replaced Perth in the top four. East Fremantle ahead of Subiaco by a game, and then a bit of a drop to Peel Thunder and South Fremantle, despite their improving performances, still sit at the foot of the ladder. So next week, round 17 commences the final third of the home and away season. We travel to Brown Stadium for the match of the day between Perth and Subiaco. We'll be live on air from 2pm.